up on me. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to go ahead and get into it, man. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for this beautiful day, guys, once again, man. All right, guys, we're going to start off by saying, and we're going to start off in prayer. Everyone bow your heads. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the eyes that you have given us, the ability to able to get up again. Yet, we did. We were not promised tomorrow, but I thank you that you have given us this day, our daily bread. Father, may you strengthen our bones, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, your holy discernment, clean us a clean heart, renewing us a new mind. Lead us into all truth, Lord. Allow your word to read us and give us your knowledge and wisdom so that we understand your good and perfect will for our lives Re um um reveal to us your truth god well most importantly in your name and clean in us a clean temple so that you can dwell in us and so that we can dwell in you in your name out of now we pray amen amen everyone says amen we're gonna go ahead and get into it thank you jesus Let's go. All right, guys. So the title of this is Jesus Has Risen. Guys, Jesus Has Risen. Hold on, man. Jesus Has Risen. All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and get into it. It says right here, Jesus Has Risen, verse 1. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and, Sol and, and, Sol and Solomon, Solom Salom, bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus's body guys this is after Jesus was crucified and this is on the third day might I add so this is just context and says and they might anoint Jesus's body very early on the first day of the week just after sunrise they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb but when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. Guys, this is a miracle in itself. Can you guys not? He, he prophesied to them and told them that he would die on the cross, go and die for their sins and rise. And I mean, he would be in the grave for two, uh, three days. And on the third day, he would be risen. This is the miracle that he is that that is being preached right here for the simple fact that all of them there was multiple people that walked up to the tomb looking to anoint Jesus's body they were uh, they were initially going to roll the stone away but when they got there they looked at something that looked impossible and they seen that the stone the stone was large in itself so they felt their in uh, they felt their their shortcomings their insufficient funds their um um, they had doubts whenever they seen the obstacle that was in the way, the obstacle that they knew was there, the obstacle that was meant to keep things from getting out. But here, this is the this is the will and the promise and the purpose of the Lord. Listen to how it prevailed through the obstacle. And it says, but when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, guys, very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side. The right side. The right side of God is power. The right side of God is power. His divine power. His guidance. Guys, this is the... Hold up, hold up, hold up. With his mighty right hand. Yep, 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 yep. The right side of it, it says in Exodus, your right hand, Lord, was majestic in power. Your right hand, Lord, shattered the enemy. This was Exodus 15, verse 6. This is speaking and giving an example about what uh, about the power of God's right hand hand the right side but guys this 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 is symbolism for power guys so this was not just some regular person that was sitting on the right side no this was a man dressed in white linen he was clean from head to toe for the blood had washed him clean if you guys are getting the symbolism here that it wasn't jesus that was standing there but it was this man wearing white sitting on the right hand side it, just hear it hear it i'm gonna keep going and they asked each other oh no 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 no! it says right here as they entered the tomb there was a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side and they were alarmed they were frightened i can i already know that they were frightened for the fact that the stone was rolled away and there was one man on the inside wearing a white robe on the right side 
and Jesus did tell them that he would resurrect. But did they believe, guys? Out of fear, they 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 they, they had fear. They had doubt. They had and their emotions were flurred up in this moment. But guys, hear this. It says he says this. This is what the guy in the white says. Don't be alarmed. He said you are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They were scared. They were frightened at the presence of this angel sitting in the tomb on the right side in the power of God. That it was one man who raised, I mean, there was one man and by the power of one spirit that raised him from the dead. And that they realized that Jesus was not lying after all, their doubts, their worries, their fears had once overcame them in the moment. I mean, through the trials of Jesus being persecuted, through them seeing their savior, uh, savior up on a cross, from them seeing the blood pierced in his side and everything coming out. Guys, you can imagine how they felt. They had been following Jesus for the amount of the, for all the amount of time of his ministry up until this point of him coming to the cross, not expecting him to go and die for the very thing that would have killed all of humanity which is sin and he ends up walking out the same way that he prophesied in the holy spirit's name but guys they were scared all of their fears they were trembling and bewildered it had frightened them that that what they had what uh, that, that what jesus had said was really true guys it, it actually it does it, it it actually is crazy to me now that you that now that you read it that way that they were shook at the fact that jesus was not lying you guys hear what i'm saying do you guys hear how doubt worry and fear will cloud over our minds in the midst of trials and tribulations but this is just this is just this is just something that i want to put out there because the 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 schemes of the devil wants you to feel like that jesus is not listening to you that jesus is dead that jesus doesn't have power that jesus can't do what he says he can do but this is the truth and this is how jesus proves what he can do because he does the all he does he does the the impossible things he does the things only he can do he does the things that only jesus can do through the spirit, through the power of the spirit, by leading the example that he led, by living a perfect life. And it says right here, he says, with trembling and the women went out from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone. They were so frightened that they were silenced. Their fear, their doubt, their worry, everything that they had on them, their grief up until the point of them seeing the tomb, roll, the stone rolled away up until them leaving. They were so bewildered and frightened and shaken that they couldn't even speak a word. Hear what the spirit is saying. This is what uh, this is what a miracle would do. This is what the power of Jesus, the power of God will do to you. This is what the, this is this is this is this is what re the removing of the veil of your mind can do to you. The casting off what is old but putting on what is new and pressing towards the mark guys this is this is this is literally what they're doing. Casting off what was, putting on what is new and going forward towards the mark. This is what those lady women are doing here. And it says they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. They were afraid. They were shook. They didn't know what to think. And it says right here, the earliest manuscripts and some ancient witnesses do not have verse 9 and 20, but we're going to read that right here. And it says, when Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary. He appeared to Mary first, Mary Magdalene, whom of, I mean, out of whom he had driven out seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, they did not believe. Guys, how could you, this isn't a prime example that these people were walking with Jesus. These people had seen his miracles. These people had witnessed the one true God on earth in flesh, and yet they still didn't believe. So how much more difficult, uh, so how much more, um, um, should we be putting our faith in the Messiah and in things that we have not seen? He said, blessed are those who believe and have not seen. 
What scripture is that? Hold up. Hold on, guys. One second. I'm looking it up right now. And it says right here, John says this. And then Jesus told him, and this is John 20, verse 29. It says, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet, and yet have believed. That is that is the testimony right there. Blessed are those who have not seen. So those of this age who have not seen the flesh and blood. You, you guys get what I'm saying? The flesh wrapped around spirit. The one who, who sits upon the throne, dwelt among men, and stood in the midst of um, humanity and, cru and was crucified for our sins. That is what he's saying right here. And it says right here. Um, 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 and it says, she went and told them, those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping, when they heard that Jesus was alive, that she had seen him, they did not believe. They did not believe it, which is crazy, guys. Like I said, they had been in the presence of Jesus. They had seen what he can do, yet they still had unbelief. And this right here, afterward, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking in the country. These returned and reported it to the rest, but they did not believe them either, which is crazy. Once again, this is this is unbelief again. Guys, this is the attack of the enemy, the schemes and the wiles of the devil. Yet Jesus had already prophesied and told them what would need to be done and how he was coming back. They still did not believe because the uh, the the the. the Sometimes the 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 absence of the uh, the absence of um of what was once there. So guys, there you may be going through a season of the absence of the of, of God speaking or the absence of feeling the presence or the absence of of the gifts of the spirit or 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 the absence of peace and these things. And when I tell you that the absence of things that you once felt in another season doesn't mean the absence of Jesus altogether. It doesn't mean the absence of the promise because that's what he wanted them to get right here. They didn't think that just because he was in the grave that it would still come to pass, but Jesus already prophesied and told them that even though I go down to the pit of hell, I'm going to steal the keys, come back up on the third day for your sins, and I will be resurrected. And he says right here, after Jesus appeared to him in a different way, he says, verse 14, later, Jesus appeared to the 11. He, so he had to do this three times to get them to believe. And he says, later, Jesus appeared to the 11 as they were eating. He rebuked them from their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. That is self-explanatory. It's what I was just saying, guys. We must believe. We must. The only thing that, that pleases God is faith. And their lack of faith displeased Jesus that he had expressed what was going, what, what was to come. And yet they still allowed Satan's uh, attacks and attempts to keep them bound in their, uh, in the, uh, keep them bound and subdued to lower thinking. And when I say lower thinking, doubt, fear, condemnation, guilt, shame, all of these emotions all of these feelings all of these things that keep us bound heavy yokes that keep us weighed down and that will that will inevitably keep us from believing the promises and the truth and the promises of God and here right here it says and it says he said to them he said and in verse 15 he said to them go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. This is what Jesus says to all of us, guys. This is not just for the disciples, because all of us can admit there's times in our lives where we all have been doubting Thomases. But guys, right here, all of the disciples were doubting Thomases. They did not have faith that Jesus was really risen. But this is what he says to you. And I send this, and, and the Holy Spirit sends this unto the community in the union of the body of Christ so that we may get the fullness and gain the knowledge and wisdom and and, and, and walk in the um. The, the order of the Most High, what he has given us, commissioned us to do on this earth. We are his hands and feet. He is, 
I bet say we are his hands and feet on this earth. So we ought to listen and obey and we must bring our faith and our works together. So hear what the spirit is saying. He says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation, all creation. Not one walk, not one country, not one little sec. Guys, every area of creation, all creation. And he says, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. You cannot be an unbeliever and think that you are on the righteous path. The, the, the road that is narrow, but few take no. That is not the road that Jesus, um, that, that, that is not the road that unbelievers are on. Unbelievers are on the road that many, uh, that wide and many take, and many shall perish by that road. But guys, we must snatch those as the body of Christ who, I mean, us, us who are commissioned as believers, we must snatch those who are unbelievers and snatch them into the reality, into the being, into the calling, into the fullness, for once it was for the Jews, but now it is too for the Gentiles. So you as a Gentile, uncircumcised in your faith, must be circumcised in your faith by the, baptiz by the baptism of the Spirit and must be renewed in your soul, in your temple. And now you must walk this very narrow path and you must do the same as you were snatched out, snatch others out from the pit of hell so that they may see and prophesy and preach among all creation as he commands us here. Whoo! Woo! Hear what the Spirit is saying. And these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They will dry out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. I'm a living testimony. Living testimony. We should present ourselves as a living sacrifice unto the Father, un, un, so that He may do His bidding in our life. So that we, so that He may use us as His tools, as His vessels. Um, so that He may, so that we may join the greatest partnership that the world has ever seen, and creation will never see another partnership greater than the one that is created by God, and that 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 is created by God and man. He wants to unify the body, the body of Christ. He wants us to come together and fight against the principalities and rulers of darkness and evil of this realm. But God says that if we take up this mantle, if we take up the burden, if we take up the yoke, which is easy, that we may, not may, that we will walk into it and we will come out unscathed. There was three Hebrew boys thrown in the fire, uh, uh, Shirak, Meshach, and Abednego. But there was a fourth man in the fire when the king was looking at them. And they came out not smelling like smoke. They came out with not a scale, not a, not a scratch, not a burn on their body and it was because of the power of God those who stand in the will those who will stand firm amidst the enemies those who will stand for what is right stand for truth stand for justice stand for what is uh, stand for things um, that this world condemns and, and, and tries to make it seem like we are not to go for. Guys, God wants us to stand for the things that Jesus stood for. And if we do those things, he says we will come out unscathed. We will be able to pick up snakes and we will be unharmed. We will be able to drink poison and it will not touch us. He says we will be able to lay our hands on the sick and they will be healed. He says we will be able to cast out demons in the power of the Holy Spirit and they will be cast out forever. I'm telling you this because it has happened in my life. I have seen it by the power of the blood. It is all because of Jesus. Not by my might, but by his. Not by my strength, but by his. In my weakness, he is strong. And same goes for you. Who does Jesus say you are? You must seek his heart so that you understand and know his precepts. And it says, verse 19, after the Lord Jesus had spoke to them, he was taken up into heaven and he sat at the right hand of God. The hand that, symbolizes, that, that symbolizes power. He sat at the right hand of God, where power is given, where power comes from. It is not by our power. When you wake up in the morning, that strength that you take and you take into your workplace, it is God's power that allows you to do that. It is his grace that is given, that, that, that is flowing in your life that allows you to continue walking day by day. It is his breath that keeps your body moving. It is his breath that keeps your body moving. And no one can say it is by their own means that they are on this planet, but by the Father and that the Father 
father knew you before creation. He knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb, and he knows every hair counting on your head. So you must understand that you have a um that you have a um a that there is a covenant with the with with the all knowing the all the omnificent God um the 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 God who stands inside of time, outside of time, and around time, guys. He is the one. He's 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 got a covenant with his people. And guys, his people, the covenant is not just with Jews. Like I said, when Jesus was crucified, and this is what this text is talking about, when he was resurrected, the covenant is now with those of all creation. Those who may gain and believe. Those who believe gain this covenant with the Messiah. And they will be washed in the blood, renewed in their minds, strengthening where we are weakened. And guys, that is the power of God. Who hear what the Spirit is saying? Hear what the Spirit is saying. God will whisper in your ear, but I will talk to you from a distance because God knows where you are. He knows where your location is. Don't act like God don't know where you're at just because you may not hear his small, subtle voice, but you got to block out all the other noises. There may be everything, the wiles of the devil going around in the world right now. There may be all these winds, waves, storms, trials, tribulations, persecutions. Everything could be stacking up against you, but just like most Moses and the Israelites at the Red Sea. Their backs were against the uh, back up against the wall. Pharaoh and his armies were pursuing him. But God told Moses, stretch out. He said, what is in your hand? Stretch forth your rod into the sea. And as you do that, the power of God split that sea. And the enemies that you see today, you shall see no more. Who? And it says, verse 20. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere. And the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. Guys, if you guys want to go over to Mark 16, go over there and read verses 1 through 20. Have the Holy Spirit reveal to you. Ask him for wisdom. Ask him for his eyes to see and his ears to hear. Look through the lens of the Holy Spirit when you read the scripture. And you will see that book, that very book that you, that you couldn't understand yesterday. It will start reading you back in your face today. And it will change your heart. Change your mind. Changing of the mind is also repentance. Repentance is just a change in mindset. Therefore, you were going that way. Jesus will turn you this way, and you will start walking in the right direction. I love you. God loves you. Make sure you guys, make sure you guys share the message, man. If you guys want to come back here later, you guys can always do that. This will be posted on YouTube, um, on the Real Yahoo. I posted a word of the day on YouTube today, and it's called Need Funds. If you guys are insufficient in funds in the spirit, go over there and check it out. I, uh, the Holy Spirit preached a bomb message so that you guys may get healing, that you guys may get revelation, and so that you may um, edify the soul. Iron sharpen iron. Do not forget that. Come in unity with the body of Christ. Come in community with the body of Christ. Don't let church hurt hurt you. Just because one church hurt you don't mean God didn't call you to another one. Continue seeking after the Lord's heart. Staying steadfast in his word and, 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 and moving upon his will so that you guys at the end of the day at the end of time, whenever you do have to come up in the in the midst of the Messiah at the throne, whenever he is judging all of mankind, you will hear a well done. And that is what we should strive for, to hear that well done in person. Thank you. Shalom. This who we are, the sin if you can't even stop us Can't get right through to y'all cause all of your hearts have been hardened Deuteronomy 28 is where God has said he departed Not a feeling ever really